Welcome to TradingNBA.com. This is John's report. It's for, well, the second or third. Uh, obviously, there's going to be just a very short window for uh, European session in futures and probably be fairly benign. And then you'll have uh, the holiday. And then, of course, it'll start up again after that. But ES making a nice uh, move again right back above now the ABM. Uh, so pretty straightforward right there. We got the cross back above and still no real activity from MBI White, and so that's always a clear sign when that takes place in crossover of the um, blue above gray, almost there, just right on the edge of it. And uh, uh, still an interesting uh, move back and forth here with the uh, DOC readings with uh, orange having popped back above, but then coming back down again here and meeting the uh, steel. So that crossover of steel is going to be a bit bullish and we're probably going to even see uh, the beginnings of a crossover of green over red again, uh, midterm buyers over the long term. and that should be enough to turn things around. So it was pretty shallow from a uh, check out histogram right here. So you can see it's gonna, if it improves right there, that's going to be a much higher uh, dip. And of course, being that we're already at the highs, you're looking at a move towards the 100%, which we're kind of expecting to return back to those highs anyway. No real shock, of course, you know, most of this is just narrative game. Everyone's expecting the rate cuts, you know, despite the, you know, this is where they get in trouble with their phony data. It's like on the one hand, they're producing numbers that say employment's good, everything else is fine. Well, if that's the case, then what do you need to cut rates for? Um, but then on the other hand, uh, people who look at, you know, actual data is like, you know, things aren't as rosy as they're suggesting, but hey, you know, again, we're in the narrative game and everything is about uh, perception. They did the same thing with oil, you know, suggesting that there was going to have to be uh, um, increase in productions and that was going to improve things. But the reality was you have the Libya situation where they're cut production. So uh, it's a net nothing, but it was enough to drive oil prices lower, suggesting that there was going to be some kind of, you know, improvement. The reality is, is that China is not uh, sucking up the demand, which is an indication that uh, we have issues in other parts of the world as far as development from a NASDAQ standpoint. You, you turn around here of uh, Magenta, almost about to cross back over here. Uh, over yellow and that would be also a, a trigger signal so getting a little bit better alignment between um, S&P and NASDAQ except for uh, from a NASDAQ standpoint shorts are still a little more elevated but supported beautifully right off that 50% level and uh, was fairly clean from that standpoint still pretty decent from a volatility standpoint you gotta appreciate that from a treasuries of course you know you would think that uh, every but he's talking about rate cuts that, uh, you know, you'd see uh, this fall even further, but uh, hasn't happened as of yet. Uh, so, uh, it, again, I'm not really too worried about what you hear from the news. I think it's pretty straightforward to follow what we see from our readings. And uh, this volatility is going to continue as long as the election trades back and forth. And the closer it appears, which... You know, depending on what you're looking at, uh, you're not going to know even on election night because the way they've changed elections in America now, uh, it's not until after they see how far their deficit is before they uh, decide who's uh, going to win that with the miraculous uh, creation of ballots. Uh, from an oil standpoint, uh, there's that decline that took place on the news with a giant spike there. Uh, we'll see if that's able to sustain itself, but it's helpful uh, as far as an inflationary, but you've got to sustain that over time. And, you know, one, one day move isn't enough. Uh, they want, of course, to have as cheap oil prices and that as they can prior to the election. So uh, we'll see if they're able to maneuver it for long enough to make a significant impact. Of course, the euro uh, you would think would be bonus on that news, but they had already pre-priced in all everything and then some, like a half point cut and everything. And, that's clearly not likely to happen. If it did, it would be crazy because that would skyrocket inflationary concerns as well as uh, increase the bubble of everything. Gold standpoint, still back and forth in between, but still relatively up at its highs. Uh, you're going to continue to see central banks in that uh, occupy uh, all kinds of commodities. I think, uh, you know, as we look forward to post-election, everything commodities are going to be... Uh, 
where everyone's going to want to be and they'll just cycle out of, uh, you know, a lot of your regular consumer spending, things like that, because obviously you can see the consumer has been tapped out, though they suggested that, you know, the improvements for GDP and everything else were based on consumer spending. So uh, I don't know which it is, you know, credit cards reporting softer spending and everything, but yet they're saying that there was an increase. So if you believe any of the numbers, uh, okay. But at the end of the day, we don't care. We're just going to follow the meetings. Yeah. And the emergency sirens blaring in the background are definitely a cue for exactly that. Bitcoin is still back and forth right off this algo. It's uh, just having difficulties. And again, supply shocks. It's got to absorb all of that uh, going through. And then here we have ETH uh, likewise. And pretty weak condition. Actually, decent that it's held up uh, with the MBI white spike. Would have expected to break uh, below that uh, 23%. Um, and still may very well do that. Uh, you're caught in that uh, zone. The dip below uh, from the uh, DOC for the orange uh, produced a little bit of a spike, but with no reset of the steel once it dipped back below the uh, neg uh, positive 13.5, because that's effectively it coming from underneath, um, it faded off really fast. So. It's all pretty straightforward. When we look at it from an intraday standpoint, you can see we're getting some nice volatility. And again, I think this is all just a reflection of uh, options trade and having to go against uh, where crowds build up. You know, whether it's call buyers going in, you trade them back down. Uh, for people flip to the put side, and then you can skyrocket off of that uh, short cover setup going from the opposite direction. But for the most part, we just traded between the two algo levels slightly spiking above now that becomes a critical uh, 56 53 from a support standpoint if it's able to hold that and maintain it then uh, you get the bounce off that and that would be where you start pushing towards new highs but you can see going all the way across that has been a uh, tough threshold to break going all the way back here from the 22nd uh, we get the brief move above brief move above brief move above um, at a certain point uh, if you can't continue to hold that in and push through it uh, you're going to get the uh, added selling within that uh, con. The construct is just sort of like you keep beating your head against the same, you know, ceiling, and eventually people just get tired and they're like get concerned. Um, I think that the real issue is how much uh, capture we have as far as people not making decisions and or postponing them until there's clarity with the election. And I think that's the bigger trigger signal for anything because that is usually the paralysis that you see when, when there's uncertainty. And that locks up a lot of money, whether it's capital investment, everything else, and that uh, it has a ripple. And it just usually takes a few months and you won't even see the effect of it until after the election, but there definitely will be uh, an effect from that. Uh, from an intraday standpoint, this was pretty clean. We started uh, uh, pretty much off a high note coming on the pre-market and then it just sold off completely once they got enough people short in there then it just flipped around on the stability of it and uh, the options flipped it around to close out to the peak area going into a nice holiday so everybody's happy uh, as always though we'll just continue to follow these readings as they come uh, I would expect continuation of volatility though uh, going into September and through October New indicators will be uh, popping out, so everyone will be ready to start the new month of excitement. So we'll look forward to it. As always, trade well. Talk again later. Anything relevant, I'll put on the Skype chat.